Hello everyone. We already know that Euclid collected all the known work and arranged it into his famous treatise called Elements and that it had 13 chapters each called a book. So let us understand his approach now. The Greek mathematicians of Euclid's time thought geometry as an abstract model of the world in which they lived. The concept of point, line, plane and so on were derived from what was seen around them. So what did they think about shapes and solids? Here we see a Greek dice having 20 faces. A solid has shape, size, position and can be moved from one place to another. And the boundaries of the surfaces are either curves or straight lines. And these lines or curves end in points. Now, if you realize, this Greek ties was actually an icosahedron, that is, a solid figure with 20 plane faces, specifically equilateral triangles. And this is how they defined 3D shape, that is, a solid. Consider the three steps from solids to points. In each step, we lose one extension called a dimension. So, a solid has three dimensions, length, width and height. A surface has two dimensions, namely length and width. A line has only one dimension, that is length. And a point has no dimensions. Euclid summarized these statements as definition in Book 1 of Elements and it has 23 such definitions. Few definitions from Book 1 are A point is that which has no part. A line is breadthless length. The ends of a line are points. A straight line is a line which lies evenly with the points on itself. And a surface is that which has length and breadth only. So through these definitions, one could figure out what a point, a line or a surface was. You know, Euclid also wrote down many assumptions which are actually obvious universal truth. Few assumptions were only for geometry which he called postulates. For example, a straight line may be drawn from any point to any other point. Few assumptions could be used throughout mathematics which are called axioms. For example, things which are equal to the same thing are equal to one another. Here, area of this rectangle is equal to the area of the given square and area of the given triangle is also equal to the area of the given square. Here, both the areas that is area of rectangle and area of triangle are equal to the area of the given square. So, both the areas are same that is area of the given rectangle is equal to the area of the given triangle. So now you understand what Euclid meant by axioms and postulates. In our next class, we shall learn more about the contents of elements. Until then, bye-bye.